Ooh, what's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Caden's Podcast. This episode is brought to you by White Glove Carpet Cleaning. As you may know, in the average home, up to five pounds of dirt can collect under carpeting every year. And viruses like the norovirus can survive in your carpeting for up to a month. Dust, pollen, viruses, mold, and even such, and even blah, 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 and even pests such as dust mites thrive in these uncleaned carpet conditions. White Glove Carpet Cleaning is a Davis County family-owned company that has been solving these issues for over 25 years. From homeowner to business person, White Glove provides professional steam cleaning to carpets, tile, upholstery, and vehicles with the utmost care, and is your 24-7 contact for flood and mold emergencies. Right now, White Glove is offering an incredible deal, which includes three bedrooms and a hallway for just $99. Text White Glove at 801-425-4618 to schedule an appointment and give your carpet the White Glove. <coughs> Whoa. Ugh. Text this number to give your carpets the White Glove treatment it deserves. That number is 801-425-4618. Four six one eight. Hello. Oh, we're back. Hey, we're back. Oh yeah. Okay. It took a. Uh, it took me a couple of weeks to get back. I uh, posted that episode with Sydney uh, two weeks ago. I went on vacation to Hawaii uh, right before Thanksgiving. I had Thanksgiving, and I took the time to relax. And I also didn't plan ahead about – I didn't plan on how difficult it would be to get an interview with anybody through the holidays – and I couldn't find any, but I, I have struggled. And then, um, well, everybody that wanted to talk is just busy now because of the holidays. So, uh, fortunately today I have, um, an awesome friend, Braxton moon, who, uh, I have him here with me in, in my closet bedroom office, it's a studio. podcasting studio. Yeah. And, uh, and I have a few Coronas on the table, but I don't think he's gonna drink any of them. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get to, we're gonna let this roll, and we're gonna see where we go. Braxton, uh, LGBT. Okay, yeah. So I was saying, I I want I have all these people that want to be on here to share their stories that are that are related to conversations I've had in the past. But but you 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 have come at me with a different approach, and I want to. Like I had Hudge on here the first episode, and we it was all just a bullshit episode, and it was way fun. But it's it's like it's it's like not in the agenda, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, no. It so it's sense. not personal. Yeah, it's no, I not, get it. It's just like now I I'm like the guy that has an agenda now. So, and I have to fucking keep an eye on this. So I don't want that to happen again. I don't know why that happened. For those listening at home, we have a little technical difficulty. Yeah, on yeah. The computer. I don't know how I'm gonna snip that. Or fix that. I can fix it. Really? Yeah. Do you do the editing on your podcast? We don't edit. So how do you fix it? We just post it. But you're smart enough to know how to fix this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've edited quite a few. Yeah. I've, well, Braxton, we'll, why don't you... We'll talk about my we'll, past. Yeah. We'll, tell, we'll, we'll just get started. Tell us, tell everybody a little bit about you and who you are. Okay. So my name is Braxton Moon. Maybe yeah. come a little closer to the microphone. Yeah. So my name is Braxton Moon. Or I can do... Yeah. yeah. Keep going. And... Um, you know, I met Caden six weeks ago now, and it's been, you know, friendship at first sight. <laughs> We've basically grown to be really good friends. Uh, we play Call of Duty every night together. We met at a murder mystery party. We, um, my, mur my murder mystery. Caden's murder mystery party. I That's wasn't murdered, but I was. it was my party. It was his party. And it was it was, was a fun party? It, it was phenomenal. Good. Uh, Haley had a really good time. Uh, I f you know, I'm from Utah, born in Layton. Uh, moved to Kaysville and went up to Utah State in 2012, graduated this past May. If so, for those doing the math, that is seven years of college. Long-ass time to be in college. 
I graduated in public relations, uh, marketing, graphic design, and computer uh, technology. And now I work downtown Salt Lake. I play a lot of Call of Duty, like I've said, and just kind of hang out with the boys. I don't think I know. I don't think I know uh, what you do for work. My my work. I work at a uh, public relations agency. It's a tech PR company, and so I kind of craft a narrative around all the new tech, around like Silicon Slopes and um, Vivint Smart Home Arena. They're one of my clients. So it's actually kind of fun. So I just kind of like if, if the news pops up, it's probably me that did it. You make the news. I promote the news, and so I I craft the narrative around the news. Can you slow? Can you speak in dumber terms for me? For sure. So when a news story pops up, on where, like on Instagram on, or on KSL, on, on or KSL or like on Twitter, there's a lot of behind the scenes work that goes into that. So it's like, oh, if there's this conference that's happening, let's say that, I, I promote it in the background. I pitch it out to the reporters, and they decide if they want to write about it or if they want to talk about it. And so I have to craft the story before the story. To give to the reporters. Mm-hmm. Oh. And why is it newsworthy? So what kind of news are you doing? Uh, anything. Um, we've done a lot of f- like funding news. Like like one of my clients just hit like a billion dollars. And so they, they were able to like, we were able to write a story about that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, like today I just got put on Facebook. So I get to craft the stories around like Facebook and what they're doing in the, in the world. Where did people find your stories? Uh, they don't find my stories. The the reporters write those stories, but we just pitched the story before the like the story. We we pitched the story that the reporters write about. So you were you were writing these articles? No, I'm writing the pitches. I'm writing I'm writing the pre articles. You're telling the journalists what to write. Exactly. Like, this would be a good idea to yeah, write. Yeah, exactly. It's like oh, there's this. There's journalists this, aren't just out there writing their shit. I mean, they're they're writing their own things, but they're not. They don't find it. They're we, taking your bait. Yeah. So if I, I could be I could be a carpet cleaner and come to you or you could come – wait a minute. I could be a carpet cleaner and come to you and say I want you to get my story out like a marketer, mm-hmm. like marketing. Basically. And then you go to the journalist and say this guy cleans carpets and this is what he's doing and now write a story about it. And then they can go to KSL and give exactly. KSL a story. Exactly. So wow. I, I, So like public relations and marketing are very much the same – and then you work for an organization that manages yeah, so, that. Yeah, so we have like 55 clients and we manage. I'm on a team of – I have six clients. Wow. Yeah, it's, kind, you, of, it's kind of fun. Do you, do you get paid uh, Do you get paid on this amount of stories you, you that people take from you? No. You so just, I just I – just, I currently get paid hourly, but in two months they're switching me to salary. Mm. So I'll have the so big then you're not going to write any stories. No, I don't write. I know. I know. <laughs> I, I, you're not going to write any pitches. I'll write. I'll write the pitches, <laughs> but my job won't be in, uh, on on the line. That's cool. Yeah. Is that? But that doesn't. Is that speak to your degree? Yeah. So my degree. Gr- my degree was public relations. Public relations and marketing, and, and computer design. Or what so was public relations, gra- marketing, graphic design, graphic design, and computer design. But you're not doing anything in that regard. I make a couple graphics. I make a couple videos at work. That's why you can edit my yeah, exactly. stupid shit. That's why I can edit this podcast. I'm so pissed that happened. It happened. I'm glad we caught it two minutes into it instead of halfway through. Fucking, yeah, and then it stopped two minutes in. Yeah. Cool, dude. Yeah. What else do you do with your life? I, I buy a lot of sneakers. Not really. I actually only have like yeah. 11 pairs of sneakers, but everyone thinks I have a lot of sneakers. No, but you have a lot of sneakers. I have like 11 pairs. Okay, you go through a lot of sneakers. I, I buy and sell a lot of sneakers. I saw some on Instagram, one of my friends, um, I haven't spoken to him in a while. I don't know if he'd want me to say his name. <laughs> I'm sure he would, but he has like probably over a hundred pairs of shoes. It's amazing. Over a hundred. And they're all basketball shoes. Mm-hmm. Like how, when are you going to go hooping? Well, he plays basketball. Okay. He plays, he plays basketball somewhere in Washington. I think we're not that great of friends, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> No, I love I love him, but I, I haven't seen him or talked to him in a long time. Um, and you can see how many pairs of shoes I've got. I and I probably only wear four pairs of those shoes. Yeah, I wear those. I work. I wear those ACGs for work every day. And then I'm wearing the I'm wearing the um um pacemakers. I have three pairs of the pacemakers. We'll talk about pacemakers later today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, well, my pacemakers are a little different than yours. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, and then I have a couple workout shoes. So I think, but then I think shoes are, I think shoes are way cool. I just have no. Well, I don't flip shoes. Yeah, I just barely started flipping mine. Yeah, I've, I've made about eight hundred bucks in th- three weeks flipping yeah. shoes. Wow, in three weeks? Yeah. Hell yeah, that's awesome. And Steve's too, right? Yeah. So Steve's definitely flips. Like he, he's the one that taught me how to do it. He got you into it? Yeah. Not sneakers, just like flipping. Mm. But he's and he flips everything. Like he flips. Oh yeah, Steve's flips everything. He goes to. He goes to thrift shops, and savers, and gets yeah. He'll he'll mark it up like forty bucks. People buy it. It's amazing. Yeah, people will buy it. Shout That's out to Austin Clark. Shout out to Austin Steez Clark, uh, <laughs> aka Pimp Daddy, <laughs> aka Steez Steez McGee's. Find his Etsy shop at Repost Thrift. Repost Repost Thrift. Dot com. Cool, dude. Well, uh, that's my that's my little small background. I figured out we'll give more with the questions. Yeah, I well, like I said, I I don't have this. You are here in a safe place mm-hmm. now, and I have I have questions in my head that I want to ask you about my uh, quote unquote agenda. agenda. Mm-hmm. But I um, well, I guess I I um. Is there anything else you want to say about yourself before? Why don't you tell us about the pacemaker that you that you're related to? Okay, yeah. So, you know, like Caden has his pacemaker shoes on, I have my pacemaker that controls my heart. Um, May 2017, you know, I had a lot of heart issues, and they, or I guess not May, but spring 2017, I had a lot of heart heart issues. They didn't really know what was going on, and so they they tested and they thought like nothing's happening, like you're not sick, and like you've they, had problems your whole life though. I thought I did have problems my whole life, but like. 27 like so that, that spring is when it got That's really bad. I, okay and so they they're like hey like we can't find anything we think it's something wrong with your esophagus and i was like it, that's not it so i told him i was like look it's my heart fix it <laughs> <laughs> and so they put a heart monitor on me a two-day heart monitor heart me on me and they they call me back the next morning they're like hey like two days we got what we need your heart stopped six times last night i was like shit okay let me come in they're like, we got to get you in. Like, we don't know if it, if it stops. Uh, if it stops the next time, we don't know if it'll start back up. I was like, oh. all right, cool. At this point, you know, I've lost 50 pounds. I'm sick. Like, don't eat. Don't drive just because I'm worried about passing out. Don't work. Don't go to school, even though I'm in, in semester in a class, a couple classes. Um, it was all kind of shitty. And then in the may in may i got a pacemaker you know a couple days after mother's day my mom flew out they lived in germany at the time my mom flew out and um got my pacemaker we were able to celebrate mother's day together and it was a long road to recovery but i'm good now yeah you know you were i can't i can't imagine i can't imagine that happening to me or to really anybody that i know um, or have known because it was, a, you were, you had a, like, you were passing out and you didn't think, you know, you knew why it was just happening. My, my chest hurt. That's, that's like what I knew. Like, I was like, I was like, my chest hurts really bad when it happened. And it ha- you sa- I remember you saying it had happened as you were like through high school after high school. Yeah. So it happened, it happened like in high school, like a little bit, not as, not to the degree that it was happening like before, before I got it. It was like maybe once a month, maybe. Did you th- ever? Did you ever get tested for uh, a- a tested at all before spring? It got really bad. Um, yeah. I got I got an EKG, which is where they kind of test your like the, the your heartbeat. Basically, they yeah. they put a monitor on, they test your heartbeat right then and there, and results came back like, oh, he has a weird heartbeat. That's it. Like an irregular, yeah. whatever mm-hmm. pattern. Yeah, this is an ir- irregular little thing. And that's all, and that's all they said. Mm-hmm. And then and and they still don't know what's wrong. They they still have no idea why my heart stopped. But the but the pacemaker is is doing his job. Fixed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I Man. was I was ready to die. I was like, look, I don't want to be in pain anymore. Oh, like, that's insane. I, like I accepted it. I was like, if I die, I die. <laughs> I, I think that that was the start of my journey or the the midpoint of my journey to where I'm at right now. Like, like I have a whole life story that just revolves around me getting to this moment, sitting at this table, being o- as open and, and like being comfortable with myself. And that was like the midpoint of my life saying, oh, I don't care what people think. I don't care like 
how people act around me. Like I'm going to be me. Yeah. Like, well, that's, it's kind of, it sucks to have to, ex- to experience something like that, to get there. Cause that, well, cause I think that's, are you a happier person now? Yeah. You feel like you live a better life. Mm-hmm. Um, you, I remember you said that it hasn't affected the quality of your life negatively no no I, i'm able to do so much more now you still do like and you can still do the things that you loved before exactly yeah man that's ins- that's ins- i my family has uh my dad's side i guess i just learned has a bad history for hearts mm-hmm. um my dad's dad to your grandpa a, my grand my grandpa had um a heart attack at, in, in his 40s and died and was resuscitated mm-hmm. and is and then got a pacemaker and that like you are like that person now yeah. as a 26 26 year old? yeah as a 26 year old at that time so. i was 24 yeah oh yeah that's crazy man yeah but, I mean, but it brought you clarity yeah you? It, g- it gave me a clear headspace i'm mean, like i was able to be myself like i was questioning you know my role in like the church like We've, we've kind of we've kind of dipped our toes into the church conversation a little bit. Yeah, I want to get I want to get there. Well, I know, I know, and that's where that's where you're coming with <laughs> <Obviously>. your agenda. <laughs> My <laughs> agenda is coming through. Um, I uh, one of our friends has got really sick. Did you know he had sepsis? Mm-hmm. He got sepsis and almost died. Hmm. And he was he, just the other day. He was telling me he uh, well he he got. I mean, I had no idea what seps- sepsis was. Are you familiar with I'm it? I'm not. So it's, I guess it's basically when your body starts attacking itself due to an infection or some disease and because of y- what your immune system. And um, it just shuts your whole body down. And most people, most people die from it. They get, they, uh, it starts out as something mild, but will, will get progressively worse really quick. And pe- before people can tr- get to a doctor, get it treated, will suffer like brain damage from a fever too high, too high of a fever and, uh, all their organs start failing. Mm -hmm. So he got, he got sick and he tells, so now, and now he says that like he was ready to die and now he doesn't know. Um, or he's like the, like his, his mental space isn't, I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain it. Like his, his regard for his own life has changed. Mm-hmm. He's not like it's it's weird. Like near these near death experiences. Yeah. Are uh, well, it it changes your outlook for like, right, like anything. Yeah. Like I find so much joy in so in the little things. But now. you like took it in, into a positive. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes you, like I don't know if he's taking it more negative than positive, but it sounds like you take you've had this experience. And like I. I want to get the most out of my life. Yeah. I mean, I, my heart stopped. Like that's, that's <laughs> clinically that's death. dying. Like a lot. <laughs> that's dying. And I was just really ready. And I was like, yeah, if I die, I die. But then like, I, I thought of, of everything I wanted to do. I was like, I got to graduate. That's my one goal. And then after that, I'll figure it out. And now that I'm graduated. I'm figuring it out. I'm having a hell of a time. Yeah. After uh, two years, mm-hmm. going on three years, of uh, of yeah, it'll be three years in May. Uh, that's that's worth celebrating. Yeah, yeah, that's worth mm-hmm. celebrating. We'll get some drinks. Yeah, we'll get <laughs> some drinks. Okay, good. I'm, well, I'm glad you're healthy, man. Yeah, I, I, well, my, I haven't had a near death experience, but when I got sick, uh, when I was seeing signs of my colitis, I was when I was pooping blood. Mm-hmm. I thought I, I do the, all the googling. And I thought I had, well, everything was like, you have colon cancer and you're going to die. You, have, you can get your colon removed. And like my whole, my whole life is funny. I was, I w- actually, um, this all happened while I was in Logan, right when Red Dead Redemption 2 came out mm-hmm. and I would play. Great game. Oh, it's, it's seriously top, top. Uh, five best video games for me. I've only put like ten time. hours in it, but I want to put more. I put, I think I put <laughs> 120 hours into it. Yeah, maybe 100 hours into it. Yeah, I'm obsessed. I was obsessed with the story. Uh, I would sit down and play the game and think about like this is the last video game I'm gonna enjoy. So I'm gonna just fucking enjoy the shit out of this game, and I really did. 
I don't know if that had anything to do. With, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that had anything to do with uh, me almost. Well, me feeling like I was dying, but feel I I wasn't. I didn't have a near death experience. I guess I had like a I'm going to die experience. But then I was like, but then everybody dies. So what's so special about dying early if everybody dies anyway? And then I'm like, well, I I guess I have I, whatever time left I have. I guess I can just live the best life I have now and make the most out of it. And then I'm gonna die anyway. So. If I die tomorrow or if I die in uh, 80 years, you know, I, I want to be able to say so happy, do what I want and be happy. Exactly. Yeah. So that was yeah, that that whole thing, even though it wasn't I don't I would say it wasn't as serious as you or maybe, you know, being bedridden or hospital ridden. But uh, yeah, that changed. That has changed my perspective, too. I don't want to I don't want to be stuck to um, anybody's regimen or. Or anybody else's agenda. I want to do what I. I want to. I want to. You know, live. Be your own person. Yeah, I want to be my own fucking person and yeah. be happy for myself, not for anybody else. Yeah. So, it sucks that. Well, it sucks. It's too bad that I couldn't figure that out without getting colitis, or that maybe you couldn't figure that out without your heart stopping. Yeah. But I think maybe some people have figured that some out. Some people probably figured that out, right? Yeah, or they or they fake it, like. You they fake, fake it till happiness. You, yeah, you fake it till you make it, though. Yeah, like most people have not like growing up. You realize no one has their shit figured out. Nobody, no one knows. Nobody what has doing. their shit figured out. And like living, uh, I live with my parents right now, and I'm able to see like like growing up. You know, they moved out when I was 18. Well, I moved out when they when I was 18. They moved to Germany when I was 18. I should say they moved out of the country. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, and so moving back in with them now, I I realize I'm like. They're just like me, but they're just 20 years older. They don't know what they're doing. No one knows what we're How doing. How old are your parents? My Can mom. Yeah, no, my, my mom's 50. My stepdad's 56. 56. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you're 20. Yeah. So I guess. Do you have any Do you have any older siblings? Uh, so I have an older sister. She's four years older. She's my half sister. And so. And then I have older step siblings. So you're the youngest I'm out the, of everybody. I'm the youngest out of the family I talk to. Oh, yeah. good deal. Good yeah. Deal. So I, I have a lot of dad issues that are associated with, you know, a lot of my issues. And so mm-hmm. I don't really talk to my dad too much. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, we can. Yeah, I got I come from divorced parents, too. So yeah. I can relate to. Yeah. A lot so, of the, yeah, yeah, we can talk about that. Um, I'll dive in. I can just dive Dude, right why in. Why don't you just why don't you just do why don't you just s- jump the fuck in right now? In the shallows. <laughs> 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 so my f- kind of first vivid memory was I was really five. Fast. Yeah. Do you hear like a ticking? Yeah. What is that? I don't know. It's a. It's your phone. mine. Sorry. So, my first vivid memory growing up was I was five years old, and I come downstairs, and I remember I sit adjacent from my mom, so she's across from me. My dad's to the left, my sister's to the right, sitting in a chair, and there's this real like kind of somber conversation going on. I was like, I don't know what's going on. I'm five years old. And <laughs> I remember my sister starts crying and she's like, I don't want it to happen again. And you have to realize my sister and I have different dads. So my mom was married before to a guy named Tad. And I, you know, never really met the guy, but she was like, I don't want it to happen again. And that's my first like vivid memory. I have fuzzy memories of, you know, my first, when I got my first stitches or when, like I pulled my first tooth, but I I do have the fuzzy memories of like my parents fighting. I would sit at the top of the stairs, and I have like glimpses. My first real vivid memory of my life is my parents getting a divorce. I remember, like, my dad kind of tearing up. My mom, you know, she's a warrior. She's tough. She just kind of wasn't saying anything. She was just like, "This is what's going on." And then I walk up the stairs, and my dad's packing up, and he has you know four things in his hands he has his wallet his toothbrush um and like a couple changes of clothes and i go oh dad you coming back and he goes probably not and he leaves and i didn't talk to my dad for like a year and a half after that and so like that kind of ingrained in me like a lot of you know trust issues abandonment issues stuff like that and so the divorce happens like the settlement happens and it's like oh you have to go see your dad every other weekend and so i I did that and that became the norm 
And then, you know, for eight years, like that was what I did. And then I turned six or 14. I was like, I have friends. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to hang out with you, dad. Sorry. Like I have cool friends. Um, I was in a new junior high, Kaysville junior high, I moved there uh, like, you know, the year before. So I was like, I have cool friends. I don't want to hang out with you, dad. And he kind of resented that. He's like, all right, cool. Like I'll hang out with my, you know, my children, his stepchildren. Um, cause he has, he, he married a, a new, he married like this, um, my stepmom. And I mean, she's great. She's, she's good. Um, and it, th- he was happy. And so, and he has step siblings and he kind of gave them more love than me. And I was fine with that, but also it kind of put seeds in me of the, you know, I have to prove myself to everybody. I have to, I don't trust people. I have really like, like these commitment issues just cause like my dad left. And so like that kind of caused a lot of drama in my life and it still does. Um, and then I turned 16, I got a job in a car and I just, we just kind of stopped seeing each other. Kind of, I had to work every weekend and I was like, dad, I don't want to hang out with you. I want to go play basketball with my bros. And so we don't really. And then I, you know, turned 18 when it went up to college and he never visited me. Not once when I was in college. Um, got my pacemaker didn't come visit me for the surgery didn't come he texted me you know the day like the day like the, the day of and was like hey like hope it went okay like i was like cool i mean and so it just kind of has ingrained a lot of like dad issues in me and like i, I was from ages one to five he was my hero it was like like my dad's a big guy he's six seven he was hercules to me and he left and so i kind of had to grow on my own didn't really have a dad figure until I, my mom married my stepdad when I was like 12, 11. Like six years a- and after. Yeah. After the divorce. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that, so to any of, you know, my exes or my girlfriend or my girlfriend who's li- that, that listen, like, I'm sorry. I have all these commitment issues. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason why. <laughs> Dude, divorce does that to you, though. It does. Parents divorce. Yeah. F- it will fuck with you. Mm-hmm. Fuck with the kids. Yeah, it's an it's almost inevitable. I would say mm, I did I did a research on it. I did, I did a lot of research on it growing like probably when I was twenty one, twenty two, and the hardest ages are like five to seven, just because that's that's the developmental years of you know this is a this is what a mom does, this is what a dad does, and this is like like teaches you these things. I've never gone fishing, I've never shot a gun, just because I've never had that opportunity or a father figure really to do that with. So it's, I mean, it was, it's been a somber. It's been like, it's been a thing I've had to overcome. But like, I know I'll be really good with my children, probably too good and I'll spoil them. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my whole, you know, divorced parents side. Okay. Well, well, let me ask a couple of questions. And if I, oh. I don't want to step, I don't want to step over any lines. You so won't. I mean, can, this is, this is an open podcast. It's an open podcast. We're open. We're an open book for sure. Um, but you know, out of respect for you and your parents, you, you whatever, if you, if you're uncomfortable talking about it, just let me know, uh, about, so, so now you don't have, you don't really have a relationship with your dad. I haven't talked to my dad since besides, I haven't seen my dad since, uh, probably March. Okay, so most most of this year, and that was seen him yes. or talked to him. Or uh, both? I haven't talked. Well, we I texted him to come play basketball the other night, and he's like, "No, it's too late." And he is like, "He's like, it was it was eight o'clock." How how old is your dad? He is fifty. Fifty. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Listening listening to your story, it sounds it sounds similar to mine in some ways. Um. I I didn't care to put I didn't care to put an effort into a relationship with my dad mm-hmm. through high school uh, my parents you if you you probably I think did you listen to the first episode mm-hmm. about so you probably you know the story uh, my parents were di- got their divorce when I was almost 15 but they had been s- separated several times before and I I yeah I thought my dad was evil through high school and I I didn't want to do anything to, you know, work on our relationship. And then, um, but I can say that through the years he was making an effort for me and which, which makes me sad. Cause I was, I shut him down. I know that hurt him a lot. Do you feel like your dad ever, it sounds like your dad didn't really make an effort for you. 
once oh, yeah. once he stopped paying child support is when he kind of stopped making an effort. 18? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because I was in college, you know, and, like, he's my only parent in the state. Like, I... I his sp- parents are in Germany. Your mom's in Germany yeah. at this point. Mm-hmm. And, like, I spent a Christmas with him, and it was just kind of weird, and, um, you know, and, he, like, I don't want to judge things on material things, but he bought more presents for the step siblings and he did more things for the step siblings. And I was like, that's fine. Like this, like, tell me, you know, and this last Christmas I went down there and all these people were all, all, all the, you know, his, his other children opening presents, all these things. And I didn't get anything. And I was like, all right, cool. Like I don't want to base it on material things, but that kind of hurt. And so, and he's never like, he, like he made a lot of effort growing up. And this, when I turned 18, just kind of dropped. So, wow. Um, and so now I can't watch movies or anything with like dads and like dad issues in my eyes ball. Yeah. I was just going <laughs> to say, I was going to say like you, 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 I mean, you were joking about daddy issues, but. Oh no, they're no joke. But I mean, I like to joke about them. Yeah. But yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Wow. So what do you do? I mean, so now you have, so your mom got remarried when you were, did you say 10? About 10 or 11. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's your stepdad's? role in your life so he i mean he stepped in and he's been a great father figure i mean like he's been really good he's he's been hard on me but like good um comes from texas so he's kind of you know old school traditional you know men do this women do this but i mean he's very he's a good dad but i mean he's not my dad yeah and, yeah. It, and it's hard but i mean he is sure. he is my dad but he's not my father oh yeah i get that yeah, yeah. my mom's been remarried um, and I love, I love the man that she married, mm-hmm. but it was, yeah, it was not, it's not even close to the same. Yeah. Like I, I love Darren and I, I think of him as a dad, right. but I use this, there's just too much seeds of, you know, leaving and abandonment in me to right. really get a lot over of empty que- or questions unanswered. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I get that. I, I get that. Well, I, I think I get that to yeah. an extent. No, I mean, you, you do. I mean, it's not, it's not hard, super hard to like understand, but it's also yeah. like a hard topic to talk about. Yeah, man. Whoa. It just got so heavy. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> you sure you don't want one of these? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. I'm not a Corona guy. You're not a Corona guy. You're not a beer guy though. I hate beer. Do you want a mangarita? I'm good. Thank you. Okay. I, I got to drive after this. So do I. <laughs> True. No, I don't. I'm going to bed. You're going to Dollaritas. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta call. I gotta call Steez. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. I've I've always been curious. It's, you kind of already mentioned it, but for me, one of the biggest difficulties from my divorce, from my parents' divorce, was is how I handle relationships with girls. Mm-hmm. I I not like. Uh, well, have you had any? Have you had any? You say commitment issues, but what does that entail? So. I have a really bad like separation anxiety and it's like, I have to be like, I don't trust a lot of people and it's just hard. Cause like, and I, like I, I tell them, I'm look, I have, I have these like these issues and like, I'm trying to work through them, but it's really hard and like be, just be patient. And so I really value, you know, communication and relationships and like, like being able to trust a partner and cause like, I've been cheated on quite a few times. Yeah, more than I've heard from anybody, honestly. Yeah, and I think it's just because girls know that I won't leave just because I, I don't like leaving. So you have commitment issues where you commit too fast? Not too fast, just or not too much. You just like you go all in. Yeah, and but not necessarily right away. Mm-hmm. But you just you're in. You're yeah. you're in. Yeah. So mm. I'm I'm trying to level that back oh. quite a bit. Oh. Sorry to Haley, but I'm trying to level that back quite a bit. <laughs> I know she listens to the podcast. So. Good. I, I'm, I mean, I'm. Hey, Haley, thanks for tuning in. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I'm like, I'm on the opposite side. I, I'm afraid of getting my feet too wet because I'm, I don't, because I'm uncertain of the future, mm-hmm. and I, I psych myself out, and I, I don't, I'm more mature now. I don't panic like I used to in previous relationships, but I. I uh, with it's like with even with friends, if there were any, if there was contention or uh, dissonance between me and anybody, I would just withdraw completely. I'm a lot better now at not withdrawing entirely, but I still feel like, like, the way I handled my parents' divorce as it was happening was completely withdraw. 
and turn inside, shut down, don't talk, don't look, all to myself. Mm -hmm. That's how I coped. Yeah. It was, the, I mean, the, I, the way I handled it was you have to fix this. Mm. And so I have to, I feel like I have to fix everything. Mm. I feel like everything's on my shoulders and everything's my fault. With your parents? With everything. You take responsibility for it? Uh, or you did? Uh, I don't, not, not my parents, not like that relationship, but like I, all my other relationships. I've definitely been like, I can fix this. Like I can, like we don't have to yell. We don't have to fight. Like, I mean, it's all, it's all my fault. Like you cheated on me. That's my fault. Like, yeah. Wow. Like, wow. And I, I've, I've had a girl say that. Like, like she said, yeah, I cheated on you, but you didn't break up with me. That's your fault. Mm. And I was like, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> like, bitch, you fucking cheated. <laughs> Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's, I guess it's interesting. I wasn't, I've never heard of that. I've never heard of an effect going that way. Yeah. So I, from a divorce, it's really weird. This cause like my mind is so wired to be like, I have to take all the responsibility. Mm. That's how it is at work. That's how it is like in my social life. That's how it is in my relationships. It's like, I, if, if something's wrong, it's my fault. So what do you do now to, to check that? I have to talk myself and psych myself and be like, look, that wasn't your fault. Like what happened in the past wasn't you. Like, that's not on you. You're just a byproduct of that. Mm. And so like my dad not wanting to, you know, hang out with me. That's not my fault. That's his. And so I have to like realize that. Be like, look, that relationship you had was fun. It didn't work out. That's not your fault. You did everything you could. I think and even though you were a punk in high school and like, like you can't, I I I get down about me being a punk in high school, but I've I've learned to not let myself get down that way because, well, I have a brother now that's fifteen, who's in high school and has the same divorced parents, but they're in a completely different state than they were eight years ago when I was in high school. He's still got to deal with the same thing. It's uh, it's picking friends over family most of the time that's exactly what it was for me it was way easier just to go hang out with friends or to have friends over for dinner than to sit at the table with just mom or with just dad and talk about what was going on exactly way easier yeah i think most kids feel that way i even think kids in like healthy homes are like fuck my family i just want to be with my friends exactly I'm, like, I'm tired of this shit and my friends are exciting and these girls are hot and they're getting boobs. And I, and like, this is what I want to, I want to do this. I don't want to be with my family mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah, so. I mean, so only 24% of family, I looked it up actually. The only 24% of families are that are like healthy and like healthy and have like both mom and dad in the phone or in the home now. 24%. Like, wow. Like there's a lot of divorces. There's a lot of like, like parents leaving and then or coming back or like, 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 like your situation where they split up, but they didn't really get a divorce. Yeah. Like, it's not the norm to have a mom and a dad in the home at all the time. Yeah, really? Yeah. I did actually, I did see something, uh, the other day, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, it was a, it was a video and it showed a statistic from a few years ago, uh, of divorce, divorce rates in the United States were up almost to 50% for just the divorce rates for families. And the first thing that I thought of was the, like, homes where the parents are separated homes where it's unhealthy and the parents hate each other, but they aren't separated. And there's so many other situations where, where that a single parent is in the house. Exactly. Yeah. So you're saying, you're saying only, did you say 25, 24, 24% of, of homes have both. Like yeah. A, they, they call that a nuclear house, a nuclear home. Yeah. Wow. It's like, but it's like not surprising. No, it's not. It's just a shockingly low number, but you're not surprised by it. Why? Why am I not? Why are we not surprised? Because we come from divorced parents. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, we're fucking, we're part of the 76. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're just most families. Two thirds. That's, more wow, than two thirds. That's most families. But then all of Three quarters. <laughs> most of my friends and most of my friends are in. You know, their parents are fine. Or, I mean, you know, they look fine. Their families are fine. Um, I, mean, and, I mean, there's a reason for that. And we're going we're gonna to dive in. We're going to dive into Well, keep this. going, dude. Um, keep diving. Utah yeah. is predominantly family-oriented because of the church. Mm. And so people will stay in these unhealthy relationships because the church preaches family. Yeah. And so I think that's why we don't see it. That's why in our, in our other friends, we don't see that. Is because they're parents are mormon mm. 
but I can hear the Mormons nagging right now, like, no, it's not the church. It's, you know, it's, we found, we are with the people that we love and we make it work and we make our marriages work. And, uh, and if you, you know, I, and then there's people that, that believe if you are true to your faith and you're true to your spouse, or I guess if you're true to your faith, then you will be true to your spouse. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, was that, is the statistic that you said just Utah or no, was it the, it's, it's the country, it's the country. The so. Utah, Utah, I'm sure Utah is much higher. Well, let's, let me see what, I'm going to just Google it. Let's see if I can yeah. get something. Yeah. I mean, divorce rates in Utah, in Utah. The Utah's this is from corelaw.com. Well, actually I'm gonna go to marriage and divorce. Utah.gov is probably a more reliable source. I would assume so. Yeah, my computer feels like it's burning up. Let's I wonder why it's running so hard. Uh complete health indicator report of marriage and divorce. Jesus. This is probably more com- comprehensive. Than you want it to be? Yeah. I'll just go back to the other one that might not be as reliable. It says Utah's divorce rates is half of that at 16%. Hmm? Hmm? So so 16% of families are getting divorced. The national average for divorce still wanes between 40 to 50%. In comparison, Utah is incredibly low for divorce. Most are under the assumption that people who divorce typically do so because of finances or employment. Oh, that's kind of is, – is that shocking? Divorce rates are at 16%. No, I mean, this for the reasons we're talking about. Yeah, because – yeah. Because – It's weird, though, because I don't feel that. I don't feel like that's right. I just – I just That's right. Like – Hmm. Washington, D.C. has the highest rate of divorce at 31%. Utah's divorce – yeah, Utah's is at 16 Politics will do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, when I uh, – something – Something my dad once said that some of the most important aspects of a relationship, finding a partner that you can live with or that be with, is being on the same page with religion, finances, sex, and politics. Mm-hmm. Are like the four tiers, the four pillars of a of a, of a relationship. Of a, a well, yeah, of a relationship, and usually the best relation. I would assume the best relationships meet all, all four. four of those. I think. And oh, you, and and how you how to raise kids? Okay, yeah, that was yeah. the fifth one. I think, and I think in Utah, there's a systematic understanding of, of roles in the household. Mm. Yeah, keep going. I'm feeling <laughs> it. Okay, yeah, keep going. There's a, there's a systematic system of roles in the household and how people are supposed to act or be treated or be or what they're supposed to do. And you know, for better or for worse, probably for worse, they preach. That women do this and women are supposed to be subordinate to the man and like they they aren't supposed to fight. They aren't supposed to be loud or be obnoxious. And like and I hate that. Yeah. Because I think I, I think I think women we talked about this a no little bit. No loud laughter. Right. <laughs> that's a, that's no a, talking fast nine fifteen. Oh yeah. The Holy Ghost goes to bed. Even, Dude, but you're right though. I mean the church kind of sets the premise for all of for all of I mean, if you want to talk about those pillars. Yeah. Uh, you only have sex with the person you marry, and then even that's the sex. It, you're not well, very well educated. You just no. are. You have no. You go. People that are true to that have never had they a go sexual experience. Zero to a hundred. Yeah, zero to a hundred. Right when they get married, and uh, with you know whatever. I don't want to get into that, but they your sex. Yeah, uh, your sex life is determined. Politics. I think the church kind of. Says, oh, you, you know, like decide, just, decide what you want, but listen to the listen to the word, right? Like do what you do, what feels right, and probably like this is what the church says because it goes with the principles that the church believes in, right? Mm-hmm. Like I can't remember exactly, but several years, oh no, it was I think it was the election, the Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump election. Um, usually, the church makes a statement about not who to vote for, but who basically who the church endorses. I think, and it said this, that last letter said something about like, (laughs) do whatever you feel like is going to bring the country the best, the best. They just didn't want to say vote for Trump. Yeah. Well, I (laughs) I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't, I don't even know much about the candidates, but I don't think either of them were going to do a great job anyway. Uh, uh, Anyway, 
uh, politics, and then like, finances. Um, well, the church takes 10% of your money anyway. Exactly. So, uh, there's, there's a huge financial obligation to the church. Um, kids, of course, raise your kids in the church with the church principles. Uh, families are forever. There's a whole... La, the, la, la, la. There's a whole document. Yeah. And what was the fifth one? That was it. Sex, politics. Sex, politics. Uh, finance. Oh, well, religion was the fifth religion one. Was okay, the, obviously, obviously religion. religion is the church's religion. So, yeah. So, the church sets the premise for those. So, I think I think maybe maybe a lot of people that are true to their faith in the church will find the companions anyway because everyone's following the same principles. Maybe that's that could maybe that's why divorce rates are lower and uh, but and the, but in my ex- my parents experience um, a huge influence this has made my family kind of upset the way I phrase this so I'm just gonna but I'm gonna say it the best way I can uh, religion was a huge influence for the way for for my parents divorce it wasn't the deciding factor but it was a huge influence um, and it led to a lot of other decisions that you know made things worse but uh, I, so maybe div- a lot of divorce comes from two couples, a couple that is that is married with the same idea of, of you know, re- but then everything dissolves over time. But pe- but but people everywhere change anyway. Yeah, I guess I'm just I guess I'm just surprised. I don't know. I don't know why I'm surprised about those numbers. Forever is just a long time. Forever is a goddamn long and like, time. And eternity is even longer. Exactly. Eternity so, it's is just, way longer. It's people change. Yeah. Like I dipped my toes in the in the baptismal font for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So, so yes. Yeah, so tell us. Okay. Tell us about your <laughs> your family's religious history, your religious history, and your religious stance now. Okay. Um. So I was raised in a in an a- atheist home. Um. Is this with your stepdad or with? This is grown up when never went to church. Never went to church with anybody. Uh. Nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So my my mom, you know, was like, "No, we're not. We're not going to church." I was like, "Cool. Yeah." Um, and living in, you know, Utah, I never really noticed a bub- the bubble. I never did just because I, you know, I didn't have my first sip of alcohol until 21. I did it. I, I, I didn't lose my virginity until 21. Like I, I didn't do anything in high school. Like, but do you regret that? No. You don't regret it? No. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I have the same way. I didn't do it. Yeah. I haven't experimented anything until. Yeah. yeah. Keep going. Um, so I was like, I, I don't. I don't regret that. It's just kind of who I am. Like I was in high school, I was kind of this kind of douche, but also like kind of a sweet kid. People thought I was Mormon and I was cool with that. I was like, look, no one's going to come to my door knocking. (laughs) And like, I was 96% of my senior class graduated seminary. You know, Davis high is massively like uh, from an LDS culture and, I was all my friends growing up were Mormon, and so I never really noticed like a super weird thing until I came until I went to college. I think, I think that happens for a lot of people. I think in college you kind of read things or you find things out that you kind of like, huh? Well, I I don't want to really do that, or I don't want to, or I don't want to like I I want to delve into that further. College is a time to kind of discover yourself and what you want to do in your early twenties, and so. Um, I was, it was 2013. I met a girl. Her name was Sophie. Met her at a, at a surprise birthday party in the basement of my fraternity house. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, Sophie and I hit it off and she was like, oh, I'm going on a mission. And I was like, okay, well, that's not going to happen. Nothing's going to happen there. And with, with her. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, well, maybe. And then, uh, we just talked every, like she left in March. And so we talked all the time and I wrote her every week on her mission and she like sent me the book of Mormon for Christmas. And she's like, I just really want you to read this. And I was like, I was like, damn, I'm so in love. Like, I, I guess I'm going to do this. And so I read it. How old are you at this time? Tw- I was 21. 21 in college. Yeah. Met this girl. Yeah. on a mission. Oh, I, so I was, I was 20 when I met her. 20 when you met her. 21 when this is when, when this whole next, next year thing happened. And you have no religious history at all. Yeah. Never nope. read the Bible. Mm-mm. Never said a prayer. Never. Never like tried to talk to God never. or like learn about never. God. Never. I, I was never really interested. Okay. And so I had kind of like this weird coincidental event that happened and like I was alone one Christmas and I was like, cause my, you know, my family being gone, I was like, I'm alone, got nothing to do. And then 
like my I Sophie's Book of Mormon that she gave me is in the back and I was like fine I'll open it up and it's just like coincidental that I flipped to a page and I was like well fuck I guess that kind of sounds nice and so and like I, I was like you know I'll I'll, I'll take a, like a couple missionary lessons see what I what I feel like and once I said oh yeah my family's gone they harped on that they're like oh yeah well families can be forever did you know that and I was like well my parents are divorced so like well that's fine families can be forever you can start your own and I'm writing Sophie at the time and I'm like I was like I want to marry Sophie like I barely you know I kind of know her it'd be kind of nice to marry her and uh, I got baptized May 2nd like 2015 I think around that time I remember the date was May 2nd I think the year was 2015 so you know two years before my pacemaker what what was like so is, was it the family that aspect that was like the deciding factor yeah, for you I think so I think growing up in a dis like disjointed broken home i didn't want that for my kids yeah and so this looked like stability for you yeah so i was like i was like damn i want i want to i want my family to be forever like like if 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 and I, I i never truly bought into everything else but i was like you know i can make it work i'm fine and so uh sophie comes back from her mish we it, yeah okay I'll, no, go, I'll go ahead. No, well, i was gonna say interesting so you, you, you never, you, I, you said you never read the book of Mormon. No. Did you ever like learn about Joseph Smith? Did you ever look into I, I, him I knew, as a person? I knew the name and like, I never, I never looked into like his background or like what he did. Right. But you, so you'd heard about him like through the missionary discussions mm -hmm. and his role. Yeah. I mean, but honestly the missionary discussions <laughs> were us just like talking about this bullshit and like shooting the breeze. Well, okay, uh, and okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, you know, whip those missionaries a little bit because as a former missionary, I know, ex I know exactly what it takes to get somebody to be ready to be baptized. You have, uh, right now, there's a set of five lessons that every future convert needs to go through and understand wholeheartedly mm -hmm. and believe before they're prepared to be baptized, and they need to attend church several times and participate in things like this you have to understand oh well now you're really going to test my <laughs> missionary knowledge i may have forgot everything completely um the restoration of the gospel right that uh tell me if, well, I mean, tell me if you even remember any of this then continue just put them out joseph smith saw god and mm -hmm. was instructed the about two, the two vi the visions. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he had visions. He had visions with God. He had visions with other angels. And was instructed to translate the Book of Mormon, right, and bring the restored gospel back to the earth. And then, that's the first, the whole first lesson, plan of salvation, mm -hmm. which is probably what you love the most about mm -hmm. how families can be forever, and um, how there's you know there's a reason why we're here yeah. on earth. Do you uh, believe there's a reason why we're here on earth today? No. You believe in purpose or destiny uh, or anything like that? Not really. I, I think people kind of just do what they want. Like, like we we evolved and we grew and we, you know, ended up the way we are. So we, I think I think we like to think about destiny in in terms of like, oh, I'm destined to do this, or oh, that there's a reason that happened. But I think it's all just kind of happenstance. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I can vibe with that. Yeah. I feel I'm I'm in the same boat. Um, so you don't believe in purpose. You don't you don't know like I, th I think. Do we come from somewhere? Does there is there? Do you think there is a god? Do you think there is? I think, no, no god. I or no purpose. Just none of it. I or you don't know. Or what? I, I mean, no one knows. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> I, I think. I think it's a, like. I think. You know, we just used to be fishes that ended up crawling out the water, and we evolved. Fishes and, out, fish. Do we are fish out of water? I mean, technically, that that's <laughs> that's how the evolutionary chain went. There's scientific like backing for that. Yeah, for ev for evolution. For evolution. Yeah, yeah. I I'm not well versed in my my evolution. My stepdad loves the history of science. Oh, he's into it. Yeah. So you know, well, I only know that Darwin and Darwinism yeah. is a thing. And it was, and it's like the basis for evolution, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that man eventually, well, we came from fish out of water yeah. into apes into humans not, over I mean, millions of years. Not apes. Right? I mean, there's there's a, there's like a central point of where we divided between from one central being came apes and humans. 
from one central species. Okay. Right. And, uh, and just uh, through yeah. evolutionary adaptations through over millions of years came us. Are you warm? Yeah. Do you want me to crack the window? No, it's fine. Because I can't get circulation here without the air blowing on the microphone. Uh, do, do you want to cut? Do, well, I, do only, I look warm? No, no, no. Uh, I'm warm, but if, oh, if, I'm fine. I'm okay. fine. Okay. Me, keep going. So, I think. I think evolution. I, I just I don't like my last religious religion episode. I just don't know. I don't. I don't. I'm not a historian. Mm-hmm. I'm not a scientist. I'm no religious expert. I just know like I'm. I think I'm pretty fucking good with reason mm-hmm. and practicality. Is that even a word? Is practicality a word? Yeah. I'm fucking practical, I think. Yeah. I'm not brilliant, but I'm practical. And religion is I'm, – we're going way off of your story. I apologize. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I just think religion is like an ex- – it's just an excuse to – for purpose it's a it's like a reason for to like to feel like we belong or like that we exist for a certain reason instead of what time do you need to leave i don't have to leave okay i was just looking at the time just for you yeah well i i didn't even ask about a start and stop oh it's fine okay um i just i really just think uh i i really believe it's most of it is made up all of it is made up just to make us feel good I think and for power and for money and for status. Most wars are fought over religion. Yeah. Religions killed the most people out of anything. I think people want it to be true. They want that story of yeah, I Right, cuz it feels good. It feels good. It's good to think that my I can raise a wholesome family and we can live together forever. Yeah, that feels so good. Let's circle it back to the to the five points. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah yep. exactly. All right, now now continue with your with the other one. Was point three oh, of, yeah. of the missionary discussion. Okay, yeah. So there's the <laughs> living, living forever because it feels fucking good to live with a good family forever. Um, then there's the gospel of Jesus Christ um, about what it was. It's basically the New Testament, why mm-hmm. Jesus was here, what he did, and what he taught while he was here. Um, and then the fourth one is the commandments. Well, okay, this is where I'm a little hazy. There's the commandments, and then there's, like, laws and ordinances, mm-hmm. which are just, like, the tagalongs for the church and the, the all of the principles, like, yeah. like tithing, like baptism, uh, like like temple work. Strength of the youth. or Yeah, yeah like yeah. things you do with the young men, the young women. Um, yeah, I think that's so – you're, so you're supposed to be taught all of those things. Yeah. We're now okay. Now we're getting back into your story. Exactly. Sorry for the tangent. <laughs> sorry for the for the viewers at home. We're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we're okay, but now we're back on track. Um, you didn't even buy into it. No. So why did you do it? Just because of the one aspect of maybe my family could be, I could have a Sophie, and for Sophie for the one reason of I, I want to be good for Sophie. And did did, you, did it did it was it hard was it hard for you to like okay okay, so I'm sorry it's. Just to understand you yeah. and your story, um, was it – you did it for Sophie. You didn't really believe the rest of it. What? It, okay, so I guess just fucking keep going on your story. Okay. Yeah, so I did it for Soph, and you know, I got baptized, and I was like, okay, yeah, I guess we'll be happy. We'll be happy together. if, As long as we're together, I can make it work. You thought if you got baptized and you were a Mormon, you could be with – yeah, Sophie. Yeah, because of like this commitment thing that you were explaining earlier about your parents. Exactly, I, d- I dive all in. So it, it, cool. It is all, there's a timeline of like my whole life. Okay. And so I kind of go above and beyond, and I got baptized, and I was like, I can make this work. I'm happy. Like we're happy together, and um, it worked. I mean, we she came up to school after a mission, and we you know ended up dating. We dated for a long time, and she would spend the night, and we would just kind of you know shoot the breeze, and like nothing ever happened. Um, post mission. Yeah. After she's home. Yeah. Um, nothing ever, ever really happened. Like we didn't do anything wrong. We didn't break, you know, the commandments or anything. Um, and like, uh, it's coming up on that summer after that school year. Um, and I proposed to her. I've told you, yeah. I, I, I ended up proposing to her and she looks at me and she goes, in a perfect world, I'd say yes. Yeah, you said that. I, was, yeah. I wanted to fucking s- go drive to her house and slap her for saying that. Yeah, and and we, but the thing is, like in uh, like March of that year, we went ring shopping and we were like discussing it. We like, we knew what we want to name our kids and what temple we get married Jesus in. Jesus Christ! And she goes, "In a perfect world, I'd say yes." What does that mean to you now? That means no. Yeah, well, oh. fucking yeah, <laughs> duh. But like, 
in a perfect world, like to me, it's if someone if I propose to someone like in the perfect world, I would say yes. Is like, well, like what is it like? Ah, fuck. Okay, it just it gets me heated, and I'm mm-hmm. sorry. I want you to keep going. So I think, I, well, I sat there and I was like, but don't I make this whole like world perfect for you? Like I've done everything I need to do, and we ended up you know breaking up. Well, I mean, kind of. She's like, we we broke up. I don't know. It's it's a whole long story of there's another dude involved. Um, oh shit! Did she see the? Did she know the proposal was coming? I mean, you were going um, rain shopping. Yeah, we, I mean, she she had to know. I mean, like we, like we we were kind of we weren't really fighting, but we just weren't like a hundred percent okay at that point. Afterwards. No, no. When I proposed. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Because oh, yeah, yeah. like because we we weren't fighting, but we were just like you know let's just like because she moved back to Colorado. She's like let's just like figure it out from here, and I was like. Fuck that. I want you. You want me. Like, we went ring shopping. I have a ring. Like, I got to just do this. And she goes, in a perfect world, I'd say yes. And then we just stopped, like, talking after that. Um, oh, yeah. Kind of. There was a whole long story. And, I, like, this is kind of, like, after this is when my heart really started to kick into up gear of, you know, wow, you suck. Like, was, she literally broke my heart. And, like, um, and then I, that's when I, that's when I kind of was like, I'm not, I, like, the church is not for me like i still care about all my friends who do care about it but i just, I just never really believed it in the first place I yeah th- your, your tie was for this girl exactly and this girl's out of the picture so mm-hmm. okay. and so i just kind of faked it till i almost made it did she sense that you think was that maybe part of it uh, no 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 i was really good yeah. at faking it <laughs> <laughs> that never would have worked though if she had said yes and I mean, yeah. I mean, she's, once you get di- you're diving into it, and you're in a marriage, and you fucking don't believe. I don't have all those pillars and that we've talked about previously. Yeah, yeah. And not to say you couldn't have made it work, or that you know you you wouldn't have been able to compromise or sacrifice. But um, man, the, I, I just like from my experience, man, the whole religion thing is a, is a really big. It's a big indicator. fucking pillar it on is. that building. It is. It's probably yeah. the, the second biggest one. Yeah, very <laughs> well might be. What's the first one? Probably finance. Yeah. People want to be happy, and, you know, that's the best way to be comfortable. Is They're all pretty fucking equal, though. Yeah. But religion is a religion. It really is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Religion, te- well, certain religions, like Mormonism, tells you about all of the other ones. But there are religions that don't. Mm-hmm. There's some that will just let you express your spirituality and uh, they don't interfere with your family life or your finances or your or your political stances. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of religions that do that. But Mormonism has their fingers in all of them. Yeah. Is that, is that what people say? They have their fingers in, in yeah, things? Like, yeah, yeah their, eggs, in their, their eggs in all the baskets. Eggs in the baskets is better. I'm thinking of like fingers in salsa. Like they're fucking mixing their hands in salsa or something. That's what I – yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> That's what I saw when I said that, and I don't like that. I like eggs in the baskets better. Yeah, man. What did your family think when uh, about you getting baptized? My mom said, and I remember this to this day, she said, oh, that won't last. She knew. When you told her? Yeah. She's oh. like, she's like, eh, it's not real. It won't last. She said whatever. She said, it, she said, it won't last. And I was like, all right, <laughs> bet. And then she was right. She's always right. What about? Did it affect your relationships with your fr- your f- family or your friends? Mm-mm. No, I mean, uh, they were all Mormon. Well, and you weren't really partying anyway at no, this time. No. Yeah. And you like were baptized. Yeah. And so, my roommate at the time, you know, baptized me, and that was it. My you still talk to this roommate? A little bit, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they. I think they all secretly they all knew. Everyone knew that wasn't really gonna work. I mean, but that's the thing is that they just like, they look at you, they look at you and you're like, oh, new toy, and then they kind of just like toss it aside. Yeah. And so I'm still friends with everybody. Like everyone, I think everyone knew. Everyone's like, okay, like Braxton's still Braxton. Yeah. With or without this, yeah. it doesn't change who I am as a person because I was already that way before. Well, yeah, it sh- it shouldn't. Yeah. It changes a lot. I think it can change a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of a lot of people that I met on my mission, even that I baptized, were people that were in places that they didn't want to be, and we would meet them at you know just the perfect time, and they were willing to make changes in their lives that were more, more sober lives, mm-hmm. and we would help them do that. We would help them meet their goals, yeah, and 
our goal was to get them converted to the church and they they just you know they worked they worked really well together so but i think the best even the best religious people are ones that want to do it for their own reasons right not mm-hmm. for they don't have to change their person to be religious yeah right mm-hmm. yeah yes but uh but like i yeah i got i got personally i got to a point where i was i wasn't comfortable with the things I had to do to be a Mormon, mm-hmm. and then it kind of helped. It was like the road out of the church. Yeah, I mean, after like that, when Sophie said in a perfect world, I'd say yes. It kind of opened my little nugget of rediscovering who I was. It's like it was like I wasn't the that person. I wasn't like I was, but I wasn't. Like I I wasn't happy with this facade of you know being. A Mormon that's not Mormon. Because, yeah. like, everyone everyone always joked, be like, oh, Braxton's just a Mormon, but he doesn't want to admit it. Like, in high school, too, they're like, oh, you're basically Mormon. And yeah. so now I'm, like, I'm not, like, pushing toward that or pushing super far against that because I still think I'm a great guy. But, like, it's just, like, I want to, you know, go on. I want to have fun. I want to, you know, go to the bars. I want to go, you know, do all those things, and it's fine. Like, it, that's normal life. For most people, it's not a lot. Very, it's not very normal here. Yeah. For our, the Utah culture, but it's normal everywhere else. Most, yeah, most people want to fucking just fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they want to. They want to experiment with everything, and um, I wonder. I guess I wonder what would it, what it would be like, out to grow up outside of Utah now, um, knowing what I know about what it was like here. I have. I have family that live outside of Utah, but they grew up in Mormon homes. So it was, you know, they basically had the same lives as most, most of the same lives, but Utah Mormons and Mormons outside of Utah are completely different though. Yeah. Like, but they're also, they're more, okay. Well, I mean, I, I mostly know California Mormons. Mm -hmm. I know, uh, I know pretty well. I'm in pretty good shit. What am I trying to say? I know. Uh, I'm struggling to find the words. Um, yes, I agree. How okay. about that? Okay. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Yeah, I think uh, more California Mormons are actually almost more intense, mm-hmm. but more understanding. Yeah. Utah Mormons aren't very understanding. They're well, more judgmental, even though they're coming from high school. They were doing the exact same things I was like I that I do now, but they still would go to church on Sunday and take the sacrament. Yeah. Fake it. Yeah. I mean, everyone did in high school. Yeah. Uh, You probably had friends that did. Oh, yeah. I have friends that do it now. You go to Layton High. I went to Layton High, dude. Yeah. I got no shame about Layton High. I went to Davis. Davis High is a bunch of, well, I mean, Uh, maybe not. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, you said it. I didn't say it. (laughs) No, dude. I I think, uh, I think, oh, man. Well, because kids want to fucking party and do things that feel good and that they like and and, uh, the church. Well, I mean, like the standard growing up with the church involved in your life is restrained from everything mm-hmm. and follow the path, read the for strength of youth, go to your church meetings on Sunday, go to the your youth activities and uh, and you will live a prosperous, healthy life. And I did most of those things for the most. I mean, I never did drugs, never had s- sex in high school. Um, I've never done drugs. Um but now, but like, fuck, I ne- actually never even saw weed until <laughs> like this year. <laughs> um, I, uh, I think people, I think people want, I think high school is just like, wow, I'm trying to go back in time. You just become aware, more aware of yourself and your surroundings and your senses and what you want to do, want to try. And, um, but the the church is just like a hey you know what you should be doing and like your young men your your youth leaders like, hey I mean you you know where you should be every Sunday, and uh, I since my parents were divorced and I was the oldest male in my home I felt like I was the example for my brothers yeah. and I you know and I was I I had to be a good Mormon kid because it was the right thing to do yeah. Um, and it's it's too bad that experimenting with those things, experimenting as a teenager, is frowned upon. 
frowned upon. Yeah. Well, like you said, it's there's a lot of there's a lot of development that comes in that time. Exactly. That is critical to anybody's that mm-hmm. it, to anybody like to, like to, for my in my mind. Well, I mentioned it in another in my in another podcast. Um. I'm just I come I don't know if it's my fucking DNA but the ke- like I'm just horny all the time, <laughs> and I didn't have any sexual experiences in high school with a girl. I just fucking masturbated and felt guilty. Yeah, all the time, all the time. And then like and then over the last couple of years I learned that oh yeah everybody fucking masturbates. Yeah, most everybody masturbates. Everyone does, and if they feel if they don't they're lying. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, or at least they want to. I actually can. I can, I try. <laughs> I have a few <laughs> couple friends that say they've never masturbated, and I actually believe them. Yeah, I would go. I grew up my whole life saying I, you know, I don't watch porn. I don't masturbate. I don't think about girls that way. I'm, you know, I'm on the straight and narrow. But fucking man, dude, I was cranking them out like just everybody else was. <laughs> no, but, and who uh, didn't? I, but I just felt. I just yeah. I felt. I felt so guilty all the time for it. Everyone did. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, everyone went through that same struggle. Everyone goes through that struggle of finding the, their sexuality at age sixteen. Oh, but I'm talking about like the but, but the Mormon influence. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, every, oh, okay. like, like that's human nature. Yeah, like yeah, the, you were well shunned for most people lose their virginity at age sixteen, seventeen, except in Utah. <sighs> it's earlier in Utah, right? No, <laughs> <laughs> and so it's. It is that level of exploration and understanding, and we don't get that. No, not at all. And oh, I guess well, you're yeah, you're speaking to the, you're speaking to the crowd as a non-Mormon. You still had that influence yeah. because of your friends. And I, I didn't want to. I don't want to be looked down upon. Right. You. I, yeah. I, I felt that social pressure too. Wow. Yeah. Felt the social pressure. I. I. But I didn't also didn't get a girlfriend until senior year of high school. When did you have your first kiss? I was 16. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Right on. But not a girlfriend. It was just a girl. No, she was a bridesmaid at my stepsister's wedding. Oh, shit, dude. Yeah. That's hot, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She had braces. It was kind of, she was 27. Uh, she was 11 years older. She than was me. 27. Yeah. Oh, my God. She was 27. Yeah. You were 16. Yeah. What the fuck was she thinking? She was intoxicated. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That's insane. I know. <laughs> She's three kids now. Oh, she probably had two at the time. No. Oh my She's god. Thirty seven years old. That's you, right? That's you next year. Yeah. Kissing his sixteen year old. Yeah. Does anybody else know? Everybody's gonna fucking know now. Well, I mean, everyone knows that my first kiss story. It's a funny story. It's a. That's amazing. Yeah. Were you nervous as hell? I didn't know it was coming. She like danced with me at the wedding, and I walked up, and I was like, "Hey, thanks for dancing with me." She just started making out with me right then and there. My mom and my stepdad were both like standing there, and they're like, "All right, yeah." And I was like, "Huh." Ah. <laughs> You know, popping a half chub. Not know what's going oh, on. Like, what the fuck is happening? And like, oh my god, oh so nervous. Probably, dude. My first kiss was, uh, my first kiss. Nobody, there's nobody around. But, yeah. And I was still nervous as hell. There was a whole crowd of people. You were probably shitting your pants. D- something in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's the funniest. That's the funniest story I've ever heard. I love that she was 27 and now she's 38. Yeah. 37. 38. 38. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I don't know, 36. Yeah, probably 37, 38. Like three kids. Oh, wow. Lives in Chicago. I she wishes that. me happy birthday every every year. You still talk to her? <laughs> <laughs> She's married. Still talk to her, dude. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. Okay. We're in a, we're one hour, 14 minutes, 23 seconds into this now. And I know you – I I don't want to keep you up too late. Um, But I do want to ask. Yeah, ask because, because I'm – because I'm curious, I'm. I just I th- I love think talking about the re- religion and shit. Mm-hmm. I want to know uh, how. So you you kind of expressed earlier your heart failure had something to do with your perspective on life now. But did that if has that affected your religious perspective, your spirituality, uh, your your view on your view on all of that, where do you stand now religiously? I think I stand where I've always kind of stood in, in the terms of like, I don't find it appealing and I don't like for me, it doesn't help my life. 
Like it's religion doesn't. Yeah. Any religion doesn't. No religion does. I think. Have you explored other religions beside Mormonism? No, but also at the same time, I'm happy where I'm at. I don't. Yeah. I don't need to. There's yeah. there's nothing drawing me to this way because I'm I'm sure of myself. I'm sure of my thoughts. I'm sure of you know my research I've done, and I'm just you know happy where I'm at. And I think I think most people go to religion because they're not happy. And they like, need, okay, yeah, th- yeah. like that's Mormon settlers when they first got baptized, they needed, they were running. They were refugees, and they, you know, they they felt the need to be like, oh, and they were promised all these things, all these rewards, and that's why they did it. And it's just that's the same with Christians, and that's the same with, with any religion. Is it starts at a seed of unhappy, and I need to find something, and so someone comes up with a solution, and people follow. And at this point in my life, I'm happy where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Good. I'm cool with, you know, being Braxton Moon that lives down the street. And he's cool and he accepts everybody. He's loving and he, you know, he tries to understand uh, every point of view. And he doesn't share his and he doesn't have to. Right on. So. Right on. Yeah. So what what about, what about when you die? You're dead. You die? Yeah. You don't go anywhere? I mean, you, you have a spirit that goes anywhere? No. I think energy, okay, so matter can't be replaced. Or matter doesn't go away is what I'm saying. Like you, your matter just turns into other matter. Uh-huh. So like when you die, you just turn into, this, like it just kind of dissolves. And like there's, there's always, you're always, your body will, your energy will still be there. Does that make sense? No. Well, yeah, it's, yeah. So, so, so like yeah. your ener- your energy will be there in terms of like you'll you'll die, you'll be buried in the ground, you'll be cremated, and or you could turn into a they could turn you into a tree. Now it's fucking crazy. Like mm-hmm. you, that's like, how I want to go. Actually, yeah, for real, uh, I, for real, I want to be a coral reef. My mom wants to do it too. Oh wow, coral reef is way cool. Yeah, so they they can manufacture your bones and do all these things and turn you into a fucking reef. That's way cooler than just a tree. And so maybe maybe you die and you become you. Have, you come back, you know, when your bones are settled and you're a fucking reef. And you got fish floating around. <laughs> That's way cool. Yeah, or, or you turn into a tree. But you don't think you have like a spirit or no. or like an energy that is uh, that is unique to a uh, Braxton identity. I think I think I have I have my energy that I put out in the world. I think I have my or my aura, my personality that I put out in the world and that won't die. The who who like I, your influence. My influence won't die. But I will, and I'm cool with that because I've, I've done it. I've I've died, and there's nothing on the other side. Wow, that's profound. <laughs> yeah, like I've 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 seen it. Like my heart stopped, and I. No one came to visit me at the pearly gates because there were none. <laughs> or maybe God was like, God was just teasing you. It was God's just like, hey, fucking tease, dude. Nope. Yeah. And it, and if and if there is, I I'm wrong, and I'm okay with that. I. I I'm cool if I go to heaven. I mean, it'd be cool to party in hell with my friends. But I'm cool to go to heaven <laughs> for whatever that's worth. Yeah, I mean, like, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, and there's a heaven, and I apologize, and I say, all right, cool. Yeah, that's I felt that I feel that too. Like I don't fucking know, and I'm not gonna deny it if I know. How can I deny it if I know? I just don't know now. Yeah, I mean, like nobody knows, but people say they know. People are like, dude. I fucking felt that. I think I felt that I felt this presence. I felt this, this energy. And like, there's, there's definitely, and I, I'm a firm believer in, you know, ghosts, which is wild. Cause I shouldn't be, but I love paranormal. ghosts. Yeah. I watch a lot of ghost adventures and okay. I, I've, I've been to, you know, and like, like the, the, the energy is the more thing that's like, that's there. And like, just like, there's something there, but I don't know what it is. I don't, I'm not going to claim that, that it is. I hope when I die, I can haunt somebody. <laughs> but like also at the same time if I die and it's black then I don't know no you just disappear yeah yeah you just stop you just, just stop cease. and that's that's yeah. scary to most people I don't know if that's scary or comforting mm. because like you stop and you don't know no you don't know yeah, yeah you just stop yeah you just disappear like those beers just disappear like exactly. they don't know they just fucking it's gone now. They were here, and now they're. I mean, and look, now they're in your. Now they're in the heaven that's your tummy. 
Yeah, it's not a heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's just like, you don't know. And I think that's okay. Like, they they do studies and, like, they, they, they've looked at brain patterns when someone dies. And there's nothing there. There's there's one last flicker of, of brain activity when someone dies and then it's gone. We don't know what that last flicker is. Yeah. It could just be all the neurons firing one last time, or it could be like ascending to heaven. Mm. I think I've had one experience when I passed out and it was earlier this year. It was around August. And I had this experience passed out and I thought I was talking to Rachel, my ex-girlfriend. I remember it was so vivid and she's, and she was like, she was like, Oh, it's, it's not time yet. And I came back. But I think that was just my mind going this like sicko mode and this imagining. Was she an ex at the time? Yeah. When it happened? Yeah. And she's like, Oh yeah, it's not time yet. It's not time. And I think, I think my mind was just like, Oh yeah, like that's, that's, that's a dream. Cause I mean, that's what like, Dreams are vivid like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, but uh, it's also vague. Like, it could mean a lot of, like, no, it's exactly. not time to put enchiladas in the oven. Yeah. Or it could be like, it's not, it's not your time to die. F- or but, just to die. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I, it was an experience you remember. Yeah. I mean, it happened, you know, a couple you, months ago. You can interpret it however, exactly. however you want. Exactly. And I'm like, you know, I think my neurons were just hitting. Because you weren't gone, gone. You were like, I was passed out. My my heart my heart stopped because I felt it when I came to, and it hurt. That's so fucking crazy. Just because it defibrillates. That's so weird. That's so weird. Mm-hmm. Wow. I love it, but it's kind of. <laughs> it gets you high. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's weird. Yeah, man. I, well, I think I think religion, in general, is people justifying experiences like that. With, yeah. Because I'm not gonna deny. Like I said in I said in the the other episode, if somebody that I trust with my whole life came to me and said I had this experience, I'm not going to call them a liar. Mm-hmm. If I, you know, if I really trust them, yeah, in their motives and their their intentions, um, I can't den- I won't ever deny somebody that I trust, but I can't relate to it until I have a, my own experience. Yeah, so. I can I will choose to trust and if you're like if some if like you fucking had a dream and it was your ex was like you need to start a religion, I'd be like Jesus Christ and then that's where it would start with was with, with Jesus Christ right? exactly <laughs> <laughs> no but it would but it but I would you know it would it would just be cha- it would be challenging for me mm-hmm. um, until I had an experience I, I I you know I used to be so frustrated as a missionary with with people they were like I just need evidence I need evidence that this is true. I'm like, you just got to fucking have faith because that's what that's what most religions is about. Just believing it. You yeah. just believe it because, well, because uh, one, you can make it make sense. Yeah. And because two, other people have had an experience. Other people say it's true. And three, because I've had my own experiences, but you've never had that experience. So you just got to have faith. Like It will come. Your experience will come. My experience, like I, I attested to having spiritual experiences as well, just as a Mormon and. I can just okay. Here's here's a uh, here's probably the biggest experience I sh- I've shared as a Mormon that the church was true. I was in high school and I was going to. I was never a theater kid, but I wanted to be in the Shrek musical so bad. <laughs> I wanted to be Lord Farquaad, dude. All right. And so I was fucking. I was actually practicing to to audition. And auditions were on a Monday, and I was giving a talk in church on Sunday, the day before. I gave a talk. I sat down. And when I sat down, I had this overwhelming feeling of don't audition tomorrow. And I was like, whoa, okay, guess I'm not auditioning tomorrow. I did an audition, and then – uh, within the same week, I was I had an opportunity to play my guitar in the orchestra in the pit for the musical. So, to me, I I interpreted that as God, you know, with His hand in my life was was shifting the details and and pushing me in the right direction. So, and I love to play the guitar, 
so I, it was like more in my interest and it was a way that I could be involved. I that's, that's what, so I that's how I interpret it. like so the church must be true and God there must be a God and there is a Holy Ghost because this is what I felt. Lord Farquaad is the reason you felt the Mormon Church. Fucking Lord Farquaad, <laughs> dude. And it was and it was and it was the absence of him too. The absence of Lord Farquaad. The absence of Lord Farquaad. That's gonna be the name of this episode. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um yeah, so so okay, so here's here's my quandary is I can justify that experience as saying the church must be true because I believe this is God intervening in my life. But now I can say I just fucking did not feel confident about auditioning. You wanted to play the guitar. And then and then th- within the same week they said, hey, we, we're looking for guitarists for the pit. And I auditioned for that and got it. Yeah. Like, it's just fucking either coincidence. People don't believe in coincidence or like happenstance. But – Dude, don't things just happen sometimes? Things just happen. Things just fucking happen. Like, why can't... I don't understand why people can't... Like, everything has to have a purpose or everything has to have a reason only because we want it to. Mm-hmm. There doesn't have to be a reason for anything. Yeah, we talked about this earlier in this episode. Yeah. There doesn't have to be a reason for anything. Yeah. We only... Cr- I think for most things... Okay, and, th- and it bothers people because they don't want to exist on earth without thinking... I uh, have, have a purpose. I need to raise a family. I need to fulfill some kind of... Some kind of manifest purpose. destiny, yeah. Yeah, I need. I have this destiny. I have to learn certain things. Okay, here's something that's really interesting. I just finished reading a book called "Many Lives, Many Matter" or "Many Lives, Many Masters" by some uh, psychiatrist. I think I don't want to give away too many details because I have. I want to talk about it with a guest that I'm having on here soon. Mm-hmm. Um, but the book is about multiple lives. This theory of of having multiple lives living before and will be living again and dude it, and it's like this book um this book focuses on the experience that this this doc, this doctor had and it was it was only like i listened to it on an audiobook it was only an hour and a half long i was it didn't go into any like this is what i'm doing because of my experience it was just um this was my experience boom here's the book yeah so it was kind of it was kind of unsatisfying but uh fuck what was i gonna what was i going with that experiences and like putting a purpose behind things yeah i don't remember all right well there's a nice little book synopsis well there's yeah i guess there's there's a plug for the book and i guess i gotta i gotta wrap that conversation up now because i don't fucking remember what i was gonna (laughs) say jesus christ yeah i I guess uh well the book was interesting i guess you'll just have to i I really want to say that conversation for the person i'm talking about yeah we'll say yeah um it's worth looking into Oh, it's uh, the, it's coming back. It's on the tip of my tongue. It had something some, something to do with purpose. God damn it! Why don't you say something? Maybe it'll jog my memory. Okay, so we're talking about purpose and purpose in life, and everyone wants to put a purpose behind things. Everyone wants to manifest something. Everyone wants to feel like they have a purpose in life. I guess that's just what the book was about. Yeah. Yeah, maybe th- maybe th- I don't know. That's that really was what the book was. Um, this doctor had an experience with a patient, and this and w- they were doing hypnosis to help this patient with whatever. And this patient was speaking as as they had lived previous lives. And uh, it's tricky. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I don't. I really. I. That sounds interesting. Fuck. It is. It is. It's actually fascinating. And I'm and I'm stuck about it because I don't I'm not gonna like call up this man a liar if this really happened if yeah. he's li- if he's actually lying then then you know it's very unfortunate for the people that believe him um, but but at the same time it's the same thing that happened with Joseph Smith who claimed to have these magnificent revelations prophecies and then I mean, he was, he was chased out of every town he went to. And you, as a Mormon, you believe it's because he's doing the right thing and he's being persecuted by evil people. Yeah. But you're never told about the evil things that he was doing exactly. while he was in those towns. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and the people are like, you're, you're fucking destroying our peaceful community. We need you to leave. Yeah. And the, and the fraud and the theft and, and the adultery and the awful things that he was doing. Right. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. So it's, it's, uh, re- the establishment of religion is tricky. It is. It's, well, just fucking people are tricky. Mm-hmm. 
that's why I guess I maybe I have trust issues in that regard too. I don't want to be involved in a religion, an organization that tells me how or what I should believe because I'm the dictator of that. Yeah, you control your path. And so do you. And so does everyone listening. And so does everybody listening. What a wholesome message. What a wholesome message. This is what we're sending you into with Christmas. Do you think Jesus Christ was a real person? Yeah. Did you think did he I think he was brown, not white. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I mean, I think there there is like actual evidence of like there being a Jesus in terms of like a person who claimed that and said, I'm Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like I'm a real person. Yeah. I think or Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. And people bought into it. Do you They're, think he did those miracles? Do you know about any of the miracles? Yeah. 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 I think, I think they were passed down stories. Hmm. I think the Bible is not, I mean, it's just that it's a compilation of stories. And like, we don't know the origin of those. Mm. I think I think that there were some things that aren't explained, and they decided to explain them that way. I think, yeah, I agree. I think, well, I I don't think the Bible is really credible mm-hmm. at all. I think with the, I, I as think many distortions that it's as many as many additions that it's had, as many uh, changes that has happened, it's evident that nothing can last that long. And people, you know. People point out and say, oh, the Bible's not real. It's just meant to be a guideline. It's meant to be these parables of life. And yeah, I, I've heard that. And, like, I can get behind that. I can get behind, you know, a story having an, uh, a message because every book has a message. Yeah. And so maybe it was that and it just started that way. But, you know, you never know. I've had a, I've always had a, a one perspective on Scripture, on the Bible, and it was I used it as a tool – to prove that the Mormon church was true, that was correct. But a lot of people, I think, look at the Bible as that, as like, these are stories, these are examples of of how whatever you make David and Goliath overcoming challenges. Like, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. It's just like, like wholesome stories that yeah. you can take uh, lessons from and improve your life. Not necessarily, this is, this is proving... That the Mormon Church is true, so now you need to follow the Mormon Church. Mm-hmm. That was all, I guess, in a sense, that was always my experience. Yeah, I've always loved reading the New Testament because I I love seeing or learning about Jesus's life, and then the the, the um how his followers reacted afterwards. And you know, if if the follower if his followers were right about what Jesus because it's all a, I mean the whole Bible is compiled of stories about what they saw of Jesus mm-hmm. and if what they saw is true then it's obviously the greatest miracle yeah. that mankind will ever experience will ever see but it also it could I mean <laughs> I just I guess I'm just stuck like what like would people why would people want like people would want to make that up for for their own gain yeah there's a whole bunch of stories that you know were in the Bible that got removed or that got added in later on because it fits somebody else's agenda narrative, yeah. and their narrative. Exactly. And, uh, so that's not, it's just not a pure description of, of, uh, what we, what I don't, of history, I guess. I mean, it's the not whole old Testament's discredited at this point. Yeah. I mean, they have like historical data and evidence that like most of it didn't happen. Yeah. Dude. Historians fucked religion. You know, Lots of things did, and it survives because <laughs> people want a purpose. Yeah. People absence of purpose. Lord Farquaad. The absence of Lord Farquaad, dude. Purpose. Purpose, man. Yeah, there doesn't have to be a purpose to live a happy, healthy, fun, no. productive life. I mean, everyone's purpose in life is should should be to be a good person. Well, it should be. Here's something that – so whenever I whenever – I, talk about this with my mormon friends i'm like there is no purpose and we should do what we want what feels good Mm -hmm. people are like well what about fucking murderers and what about people that like that like to hurt people what would you what would you respond with how would you respond i'd say you know like there's something wrong with those people then like i understand like murders and you know serial rapists and like kidnappers like there's there's something not wired right and it's a lot of it has to do with familial background and like the way they grew up. 
like and that gave them that purpose is is their background and the way they grew up they i I read a study and it was you can tell the most about people by their zip code and so like people that grow up in certain areas uh, get certain attributes people that grow up in certain households get certain attributes and so like that's like a nature versus nurture it i mean it is it is i mean like conversation like you can't explain why someone murdered somebody you can't you shouldn't have to even try no yeah exactly but i mean there's definitely people kill people for religion yeah m- mostly for religion yeah most people have died even re- today religion is the number one killer in the world which is crazy mm-hmm. i always i always think that uh, when people ask me that i think um yeah obviously like if somebody killed somebody that i know or love i'd be upset and i wouldn't justify that happening and people wouldn't justify me killing anybody else or hurting or harming somebody else so i think i think um i think the really the bottom line is we should do what we want and what feels good and within society standards that aren't set by something else you know does that make sense like within the government and the laws and the regulations that we as people collectively decide that aren't backed by religious findings or, you know, religious thoughts. We have a system of laws and governments that people should follow. And if you follow those, you'll tend to be happy. Well, what if I like to deal drugs? You don't. I'm not hurting nobody. Okay. <laughs> it's true. I don't. I mean, I'm like, <laughs> I mean, that happens. Yeah. Don't get caught. I like to do cocaine. Fucking heroin feels good. Then you have to live with those actions. Yeah. Yeah, I think (laughs) at some point, at one point too, there were people that, you know, where there were no laws, there was no government, there was nothing to dictate what we wanted. We just did what we want. Um, I, I, it's, I'm actually, I'm actually kind of, I'm, I'm, I don't have my thoughts totally gathered on it. (laughs) I, so I think, my best response is do what we want as long as we're not harming others. Yeah. We're not putting other people in misery. <coughs> in misery. I think I think following people down. Following the golden rule of, you know, do unto yourself as you want others to do to you. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think if we lived in a perfect world, then people could do heroin and cocaine as long as they did it responsibly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people fucking drink alcohol and and do it responsibly and then a lot of people do it irresponsibly and hurt other people and then yeah. it becomes a problem mm-hmm. but people can drink alcohol and not harm other people and it's not a problem mm-hmm. same with smoking weed same with smoking cigarettes mm-hmm. and, you know even though it might not be good for your own health who i guess really who the fuck is going to tell you how to live your life yeah you, i guess you should be informed on the consequences of your decisions mm-hmm. and there should be and yeah and people if you're hurting other people then it's going to cause problems in your culture and in your society but i don't want to be fuck i don't want to be told what to do i guess i just want to know what my actions are doing to other people i guess that's that's actually a pretty good rule of thumb yeah if i can if i can live the best life i can without harming other people in fact if i can live the best life that i want and at the same time, I'm helping other people. I'm living a pretty damn good life. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I, th- I think we all want to, not all of us, but we want to help people. For the majority of us want to help. I actually love making people feel good. Yeah, most people do. Yeah, I yeah. Think, yeah, it's true. I think I love like that's I th- part of my personality. I love to. One of the reasons I love to party is because I love to. Inter- I love to mingle entertain with them and entertain. Yeah, and and see and feel that people are having fun and they're mm-hmm. comfortable and and they're in a safe place they're in a good environment yeah i love i i find deep personal satisfaction in that mm-hmm. i think it's very rewarding same yeah I, I love it i think it's well and i i think most people have that to some extent i don't i guess not everybody does i guess some people don't fucking care about other people or other people's feelings but um yeah, that that's a huge, huge, huge uh, indicator, or not indicator, but a huge piece of my happiness is other people's. I love my friends. Yeah. I love my family. I love the close relationships I have, and I love that feeling people that other people are happy and comfortable yeah. in the same in the same relationship. We've talked about a lot of things today. 
Yeah, dude, in one hour and <laughs> 40 minutes and 18 seconds. I think we've covered a pretty good amount of material. I think so, too. Do you have anything else you want to say? Any other th- any comments you want to add? No, not really. I think you got to get the, you know, Dollaritas. Shit. It's 830. I think we're doing another night. <laughs> I'll have to call him. Yeah. I'll call him right now. Yeah. I've got time, though. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your podcast? Okay, my podcast. You can listen to my podcast, um, the Sagebrush Show and Aggie Podcast, on any um, you know of your music listening devices. Uh, it's just we talk about you know Utah State and Aggie football and our experiences up there, and our predictions. We're mostly wrong, but it's fun. <laughs> it's just me and. It's t- actually <laughs> fun to hear, like your predictions and then you hear the next week you're like fuck we actually had no idea what we were, <laughs> we were, we were fucking wrong almost <laughs> we all the just, time <laughs> it's really funny <laughs> and we we know it we just have fun but yeah. i mean it's just two, me and two other buddies and we just have fun so that's our podcast tell us what's the name of it again the sagebrush show and aggie podcast Sa- sagebrush show on aggie podcast no, the sagebrush show uh colon colon and aggie podcast and Ag- okay cool cool Anything else you want to plug? Not really. I want to. I want to plug the boys. I love. I love me some Call of Duty time with the boys. <laughs> I love our Modern Warfare fam, dude. <laughs> we have a great group chat. Um, I'm, I'm sure you. <laughs> we can't share most of what's got, what's said no, in it, but it's fun. No, no, we'll keep the content private. Yeah, the boys sure. are the boys, you know. Boys are. Hey, boys will be boys. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. Well, uh, Braxton, I, I I'm glad that you came by and. Hey, if I could do this every single time, I would do this every single time. But, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of people. A lot of people have to meet my agenda. I know. And uh, yeah, But I, I really appreciate your input. Um, and w- since we only met six weeks ago, yeah. seven weeks ago, we still have a lot to learn about each other. But we connect on a lot more planes than Never I thought. think we know. Yeah. yeah. This was awesome. This was cool. Uh, thanks. If you stuck with us for this one hour, 42 minutes and 28 seconds, then, uh, you know how grateful I am for you. I, I, I want to make content that you enjoy and I want to put it out there and I want you to share it with your friends and your family and people you think will enjoy it. Um, I like to know that I'm doing something that is beneficial to somebody. Uh, I don't, I I am also doing this for myself, but mostly I want to I want to make something. I want to produce something that will positively influence the people that listen to it and as many people that you can reach. So it will be a, it would be a huge favor to me if you shared this, if you reviewed this on the Apple Podcast or Spotify or on my Facebook page, if you shared it with your friends and family, and. Uh, Whatever you, whatever you feel like you were doing to contribute and support me, I appreciate it. Even if it's just a fucking message about, hey, I love the podcast. Um, it goes a long way. I really do appreciate. I really appreciate the people that have stuck with me for the last six or seven episodes. Uh, they're long. Hey, and I hear you. I hear everybody talking about how long the episodes are. I get it. But this is how it's going to be. You can't get this kind of quality conversation in just 30 minutes or 45 minutes. We were fucking – we're tr- three times that length right now, and we wouldn't have – I don't think we would have near the quality. No, for sure. I mean it would be cl- – I mean it would just be a different format. This is – I love this format. I love this. We would have no restrictions. We have no rules. We get to do and talk about whatever we want. Um, if you don't like it, then you don't have to listen. I'm not going to force you to listen. But uh, I – you take it a, take it like 30 minutes at a time. Hey – that's a great idea. Kate and I want you to do a 30 minute episode. Fucking listen to each episode 30 minutes at a time then, bitch. That's an easy answer. Uh, you'll get like you'll get like three good days out of this episode. Um, if you have any comments, questions, concerns about what I'm saying, or uh, if you wanna if you want to be on the podcast, I really don't have any restrictions for who I'm having on here. I I had a great time with Braxton. I've had a great time with the people that have talked about their experiences in the ch- in re- with religion, uh, with the, their LGBT experiences. Find me on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Send me a message, text me, call me. Uh, I'd love to get in touch with you. Anyways, one hour, 44 minutes, 58 seconds uh, is going to end this episode. Thanks so much for listening. <laughs>